What is happening, YouTube? Um, Pascal Siakam. He got traded to the to the Indiana Pacers. He, he got traded from the Toronto Raptors to the Indiana Pacers. Um, Indiana, they're not playing around. They're trying to, you know, add some more spark on their team. The Pacers, they got Tyrese Halliburton. They got Miles Turner. They got Jarris Walker. Um, they got Ben Mather, and now they got Pascal Siakam, you know, in that, in that team. Um, if I'm being honest with you, I felt like, like, the Toronto Raptors, they got an upper hand in these trades. Um, the Pacers, yeah, they got a superstar, but three first round picks and Bruce Brown for Pascal Siakam, who's expiring this year. I felt like this was insanely a lot. If I'd have got a, if I could compare this trade, um, this is like a, this is kind of like the Carmelo Anthony trade. If I'm being honest, you know, remember when the Knicks traded for Carmelo Anthony when they didn't need to? That's why I kind of felt like the Pacers did. Um, but I guess it was less extreme because. Carmelo, it was guaranteed that he wanted to go to the Knicks regardless, but I guess the Knicks, they just wanted to make sure it happened. But I guess for the Pacers, uh, uh, you know, they're, they are a smaller market team, so I guess they want to, like, I guess, quote-unquote, play it safe because a bigger market team could, could you know, sway Pascal in joining their team. But I also heard that Pascal was planning to be a Pacer. I don't know. I heard mix report makes reports about this, but that's a lot for Indiana. And let's see the whole entire trade detail. So Pascal Siakam, so they did get a second round pick. Um the Raptors got Bruce Brown, um, Jordan Nawara, Carol Lewis Jr., which is the Pelicans was also involved in this trade too. I was trying to find out who the Pelicans got in return. And I just found out it was just a salary dump. So they just traded a second round pick and Carol Lewis Jr. Um, you know, Carol Lewis Jr., he said he was, you know, like a pretty promising player from Alabama. Just didn't pull through, unfortunately. But um, apparently this would have saved like $16 million in cap for the, for the Pelicans. So I guess it was a salary dump. Plus they got Jose Alvarado and Jordan Hawkins. And then a second round pick too from the Pelicans. I lowkey thought the Clippers could have tried to find a way to sneak in this trade package and get some draft pick in return. But you know what? It is what it is. It's all good. But <clears throat> anyways, Toronto got Bruce Brown, Nawara. Yep. And then the first round pick, their own first round pick. And then <clears throat> it doesn't. And the first round picks, it doesn't look as like. Um, I mean, it's still their own first-round pick, but it is, like, 2024 first-round pick, lesser pick of the Jazz, Rockets, Clippers, Thunders. I don't even know how that works, but all right. And then the 2026 first-round pick, which is lightly protected. So I guess the tr the first-round picks is not as bad as it looks, but... I still kind of thought it was, you know, an overpay for the Indiana and the Pacers. I mean, you know, the picks may not be as bad because, you know, P Siakam, he's going to make this team pretty good. But like I, st like I said, um, I thought the Pacers could have just, like, potentially maybe had waited and then have Siakam just sign with their team during free agency, or maybe if, if they were to make a trade, maybe make it like only like two first round picks. Honestly, with Bruce Brown and you know, and then like with Bruce Brown being in this trade package and the war, you could honestly maybe try to just only trade one and maybe maybe like two seconds. Like again, Pascal Siakam. 
the contract was expiring. So, like, it's not like, um, it's not like you're saying that Pascal Siakam is a bad player. It's just the contract was expiring. So, you could have tried to, like, get a lower package and maybe stall the, the Raptors more. But, you know, the Pacers, they're a small market team. They want to make a huge splash. So, I guess this is the right move, but I still felt it was an overpay. Um, but the team, though, is going to be pretty fun to watch, though. Halliburton, he's an assist machine. He can shoot, play defense, and all that. He was, like, he's basically what Lonzo Ball was supposed to be. <coughs> Sucks that Lonzo got hurt. But, I'm, but you know, ha- but Halliburton, he's pretty much um, what people thought uh, Lonzo Ball would would do. Um, you know, they got... Um, ben Matherin, who's like their scoring wing. You got Miles Turner, whose motor's pretty inconsistent, but he's he's solid. And then you got Jairus Walker, their promising young player. Um, Raptors fans, I heard they want him in a trade package, but obviously I would not even think about doing that if I was the Pacers. But And then I had Siakam to the team. On paper, that team's going to look good, but the thing is, Siakam better sign that extension because if he don't re, if he don't sign that extension, hmm, that would not. <clears throat> basically, if he does, it doesn't resign, it'll be pretty bad for Indiana. But they are a young team, so I guess they could afford it. I can't even really give a straightforward letter grade for both teams. All I can say for the Raptors, I give it an A plus because. You're getting three first-round picks for an expiring contract. That's insane. Kind of like how the Clippers traded for James Harden. The Clippers, Clippers were even worse. They they traded like, um, well, I would not say it's worse. Kind of, you could say kind of worse because we gave up the rest of our picks, and then you gave up, and you and you and like it's pick swaps rather than protections. So Clippers have no first-round picks for the decade of 2030. So. I would say that's like still like you know a bit more of a robbery compared to the the uh, Raptors versus the Pacers, but not really actually because at least for the Harden trade, yeah, there was like one more year I guess, but I don't even know. But either way, I definitely say Toronto. I don't want to necessarily say the Pacers lost this trade because. I don't think they did whatsoever, because they they definitely look good on paper, but I definitely had to say Toronto won this trade because they got an insane amount of return, man. The return is actually amazing. But anyways, let me know what y'all think. But if I could give a grade with the Pacers, though, I'd definitely go give, give them at least, even though I am uncomfortable with the assets they gave up. I would probably say, like, a B because, you know, the team alone, like, it's an A. But with the assets they gave up, I'd definitely say it's a B. Or if Siakam leaves, though, the grade's going to be pretty bad. So I can't give it a straightforward grade for the Pacers. All I know is Toronto, they did amazing. Especially with the OJ and Anobi trade, man. They got RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quigley. So they got, uh, they got two bucket getters, too. So, I definitely got to say the Toronto Raptors GM is probably one of the best GMs he could have in the league. Like, that was pretty smart. But, I think that's all I got to say. Let me know what y'all think in this video, man. Who do you think won the trade? You think um, the, the Toronto Raptors um, got enough? Do you think the Pacers gave up way too much? Or you think this was a perfectly fair trade? Um, that's the end of this video. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And peace.